we just had the ninth or 10th or 11th it feels like it's happening every other day now strike on crimea the ukrainians have been engaged in a i don't know it's not even week long i think it's now month long campaign air campaign against crimea launching missiles and drone attacks against the peninsula at airports that the russians set up military airports uh, ammo depots command centers and anything anything in crimea that is of military significance they just seem to be hammering day in day out every other day they seem to hit a new pretty important uh strategic target a few weeks ago or i don't even think it was a few weeks ago it's within the last 10 days the ukrainian government blew up the first russian uh naval casualty uh, not naval casualty but submarine casualty since i believe world war ii and i think during world war ii the only submarine casualties the russians had were like training like prop it wasn't even i don't think it was actually combat losses so so like very significant the last casualty they had for a submarine was world war ii so this is like the first time in 80 years something like that has happened and that was along with other naval vessels being destroyed as well and this isn't the first time there have been transport ships destroyed of course famously the moscova was sunk last year and it's at the bottom of the ocean that's the flagship of the russian black sea fleet that was according to the russians carrying the true cross of christ which is now at the bottom of the ocean if you believe that they actually were carrying that but anyway the attack against the black fleet the black sea fleet specifically continued today as the public facing hq was bombed by the ukrainians using storm shadow missiles which were provided to them by the united kingdom we have a bunch of different angles of this since this is in the city center uh this is uh in a pretty uh you know populated area and so there's a lot of cell phone footage coming out from locals who were filming the location getting bombed. So it was impossible for the Russians to really cover up. Uh, here is uh, one of the clips of this. And you can see from this clip that there's already been a strike and then a second strike happens. So it was multiple strikes on the center. The Russians claim that they shot down five, but we know that multiple rockets got through. Who knows how many they actually shot down? Um, let's check out this clip quick. Man, that tore, that tore a gigantic hole in that building. Thing is about the Storm Shadow, uh, in comparisons to a lot of other long-range missiles, is that it has very, like, deep penetration. It is, I don't, I don't want to get into all the, like, technical, like, weapons nerd stuff, because I'm not a weapons nerd, but it has an ability to, to penetrate a concrete and, and reinforce material very effectively. Um, it that hasn't only done it here, but in many other uh, targets that it's hit across the country. Um, this was very embarrassing for the Russian government. This is the public facing office HQ of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, meaning that the Russian government knows that the Ukrainians know where this in is. In fact, the Ukrainians have tried to strike it in the past and have failed. But even though Crimea is of extreme strategic importance to the Russians, in fact, this is where the whole war started in 2014. It's where all of this began, and hopefully it's where all of this will end, the black heart of the occupation. They should know that the Ukrainians want to strike this. So why were the Ukrainians able to get through? Is it because that the, the Russians have diverted enough air defense to other locations in the country? Is it because they had to divert air defense to other locations inside Russia since there's been a big drone campaign? And that is part of the reason why the Ukrainians are engaged in the drone campaign. It's part of the reasons why the Ukrainians are striking Crimea so much is so they have to redirect and, and reorganize their air defense systems and their air force pulling it away from the front line in Zaporozhye, which the Ukrainians are continuing to put immense pressure on as they go through the different Russian defensive lines. Well, I w I'm saying go through, but I think a better word would be crawl through because they're making a real slog of it, the Russians, by, by throwing a lot of men into the front. The casualties down there are staggering from everything I hear. A lot of ma like man-to-man, small-team combat in these trenches. But... There's a few reasons why the Ukrainians are doing this and why the Russians should have expected this. Number one, like I just said, the Ukrainians want to divert air defense to other locations across the country, and they've been engaged in this campaign 
part uh, partially because of that. Number two, uh, Crimea is a major logistical hub for the south of the country. Across the Kerch Bridge are artillery shells, tanks, armored cars, all sorts of men and material are transported across the Kerch Bridge. And they're then stored in Crimea before being sent into the south of the country and the Zaporozhye front line. And so if they can heavily damage those ammo depots or the logistics of Crimea, or possibly, and they're still trying to do this, destroy the Kerch Bridge, then that would really strain logistics. So that's another reason why they've been hammering Crimea a ton. This is extremely humiliating and symbolic. Obviously, like I said earlier, this is where everything started. And hopefully, if the Ukrainians get their way, it's where everything will end. And so them showing that they can strike into Crimea and strike big public facing targets like this, that the Russians know they want to hit. That's extremely embarrassing for the Russians. It's part of the reasons why the Russians have been particularly tight lip about what's happened here. Originally, the Russians said one person died. Then they said, actually, nobody died, but one person got injured. And then locals were reporting that 12 ambulances came up to the building as it burned for hours and they were trying to evacuate people. So certainly that casualty number is going to rise and the Russians are probably being very tight lipped about the casualty numbers because it's quite embarrassing that they allowed this to happen knowing that the Russians wanted, that the Ukrainians have been wanting to target it and has targeted in the past. Um, there's also, uh, I, I uh, read that there was 25. Well, I don't, 25 ambulances or 25 casualties. Either way, the Russians have yet to be extremely transparent about the amount of casualties. Um, we don't know how many people have died and they probably are not gonna be releasing any reports about it. Same thing happened when the Moscow sank. The Russians were not very public about how many people died, even though many of those sailors still have not returned home and the families of those sailors are desperate. Some of them are still desperately hoping that one day they'll just kind of like show up with that with a false hope because the Russian government is, again, pretty tight lipped and we're silently declaring deaths way later. And so it's pretty humiliating. I think that is also part of the reason why the Ukrainians are doing it in Crimea. There is also and this is probably a large part of the reason why they're striking the HQ and they're striking the ships is that they want, well, I'm saying probably, but this is for sure. I, I'm saying probably because I've been listening to Destiny again recently, just listening to his streams, and he'll just throw out the word probably a lot while he's in debates. Um, Even when it's not something that's probably, we know, like, it's just something he believes in or it's just something that's true. I don't know why he throws the word probably out so much. But the Navy, the Black Sea Fleet, the Ukrainians want to force the Russians to pull it back so it's harder for them to fire Kinzhal missiles, which are launched from ships, and other missiles launched from ships, from the Black Sea Fleet at Ukrainian cities as they have been doing since the start of the war. And the further back the Russians have to be bring that fleet out of fear that their ships are going to be sunk by either Ukrainian uh, sea drones, water drones, uh, air drones, or missiles like this, the Storm Shadow, or now soon to be the Attackums. We're gonna talk about that later. Uh, they want to force the Russians to pull that back to remove pressure from Odessa, to remove pressure from Ukrainian shipping routes and to protect Ukrainian cities. So that's a major motivation, not to mention the fact that if Crimea was to be isolated and the Kerch Bridge destroyed, the Russians would have to transport goods and men and material and supplies for the war effort through ships, which the Ukrainians, of course, also want to target. It's part of the reason why they blew up one of the transport ships recently. Crimea is also a major airbase where a lot of Russian planes rest and stay for repairs and uh, carry out sorties and attacks on Ukrainian positions and on Ukrainian cities. And so the more they target those air bases, the more they target those planes, they can damage those planes, they can destroy the infrastructure that sustains those attacks and hopefully protect Ukrainian cities and protect the soldiers who are engaged in the offensive in Zaporozhye. So there's a bunch of reasons as to why the Ukrainians are engaged in this campaign. What's different is the case that they, yeah, Sorry, my English is very bad today. I've been doing shows all day. What's different now is that they can actually carry out these attacks. If this was to happen in 2015 or 2014 or any time before, really even the year 2023, I think the world would have been in complete shock. In fact, there even still was shock during the first and second strike, but now it barely gets reported in the headlines. Remember when Elon Musk cut Starlink and to stop a Ukrainian drone operation on the Black Sea Fleet 
in Sevastopol out of a fear that it would cause World War III. And now this happens like every other day. That shows how much the line has moved, how much the standards for the Russians have been lowered and what they can, uh, that, what they can defend against and what the Ukrainians can accomplish in their strikes. This is what the Ukrainians can do when given long range capabilities by the West. This is why the Ukrainians want attackums, not just 10 attackums or 200 attackums or even 100 attackums, but a steady supply of attackums so they can continue this bombardment, so they continue can continue these strikes continuously throughout the entire war and not remove pressure from the Russian supply lines, Russian logistics, Russian ammo depots, HQs, command centers, the Black Sea fleet, the Air Force, everything. Burns is an immoral, morally corrupt, bankrupt, bankrupt man. If this was to happen anytime sooner, I think the world almost wouldn't even believe it. The idea of the Ukrainians pulling this off or even somebody suggesting that the Ukrainians can pull off what they are pulling off every other day in Crimea right now, many analysts would have laughed in your face. Ha ha ha, don't you know the Russians have the S-300s? Don't you know about the power of Russian air defense? Don't you know about how much larger the Russian Air Force is than the Ukrainian Air Force? They can certainly either intercept it with an S-300 or intercept it with, uh, a, a, a air, with the Air Force, or th certainly this would not be possible. But not only is it possible, the Ukrainians are showing it to be quite simple almost. Not, not, it's not easy. It really isn't simple, but they're making it look easy because they're doing it constantly. Damn, I missed it. What did Putin say? Putin hasn't said anything. He hasn't commented on this. The Russian government is holding back really any comments on this outside of the fact that they acknowledged it happened. And then they said they intercepted the majority of the missiles. That's, that's really all they're saying. They're not saying much because they know it's particularly humiliating that they can't defend targets that they know are targets and that they know that the whole world knows the location of because this is the public facing HQ for the Black Sea Fleet. What does that mean? That means this handles a lot of the bureaucracy, a lot more of the logistics, you know, just like the paperwork side, you know, the public facing side of the uh, Black Sea Fleet. It's not where, you know, a lot, it's not like the military HQ, but it's still significantly important for the Black Sea Fleet and particularly humiliating for Putin. Rem I'm waiting for World War III. I was told World War III was gonna happen when once an operation like this occurred. And now it's happening every other day. We should have, li we've lived through how many World War Threes now? Nine, 10, 11, 12? I don't really have anything else to say about this because uh, we talk about a story similar to this like every other day now. Um, here is a picture of the before and after. The burning went on for quite a while. God, it's surreal looking at these pictures. I will say that there is a rumor going around, and this is still unconfirmed, so just treat it as a rumor, that the commander of the Black Sea Fleet was killed in the strike. But until we have some more official or just better confirmation than what is currently swifting around online um i'm extremely hesitant to confirm this so just keep an eye out for this keep an ear to the ground and see if you get any more on updates on this but as of right now we can't confirm this 100 percent Uh, you sent something about ca these are casualties confirmed. Wait, the Ukrainian government or the Russian government confirmed casualties? Dylan Budinov confirmed a few casualties. What casualties did he confirm? Well, we know that they're casualties, but I also am not going to take the Ukrainian government's word for it on how many people they killed because it's the Ukrainian government, and especially not the Ukrainian spy master. Not saying he isn't an honest person, but to be a spy master, that means inherently you cannot be an honest person. 